So a big part of what we're doing next is more of a step-by-step -step on how to deal with fear, how to overcome fears, how to spot fears that may not be so obvious. So that way, when you're riding high on these mega frequencies, that instead of taking so much input and you know, you're feeling the medicines or you're feeling whatever is, uh, uh, is interacting on you and you're just in the feeling, you can now start to output, which is totally different. That's actually when you begin to apply your power. That's when you begin to say, okay, this is what I came here to do. Because we're used to operating on this frequency right here, which is nothing like you know, when this stuff turns on it can be a little bit disorientating. In fact, you can spend most of that time when you're in a high frequency just trying to adjust to the frequency. But as you go over and over and over and over and over again, eventually you start becoming more familiar with that space. And so we're going to go through that step-by-step -step process of, so what should you, after you become familiar with the space, be actually doing in the space? So another thing um, that I wanted to really assist people with just from a, a mentor level, because you know we all have mentors, we all need mentors. This whole idea that we can do it alone or we're doing it by ourselves makes no sense. As I put on my Instagram today, that is a product of a reality that is not used to accepting responsibility and also is not used to acknowledging how many different things, if you may, beings, life forms, we even can say bees, right? Because bees, if you eat honey, or if you eat anything that comes from a plant, they spend a lot of time pollinating. Now, true, they have their own thing going on, but that assists you. So that means that bee is helping you. And that's just one thing. So then you got the breath. Then you got all these bacteria and microorganisms. So you have so much that's actually assisting you at any point where you're thinking you're doing it alone. And if that kind of consciousness starts setting in, it's not only a lie creeping in, it's also the type of consciousness that it seeks to isolate you from every single thing else. Because again, it's not true. And then what happens is you also are beginning to decrease your power. So a lot of people feel like they become more powerful when they feel like that they're doing it on their own. And that's actually not what happens. You become more powerful when you're aware of how many things are actually assisting you you start to realize the power and the effects and the formula of the things that are assisting you. And then you even begin to alter or change the state of the things that are assisting you to cause different effects in the reality. So that last stage is what they would call magic. So in every tense, the more you're aware of all the things that are helping you anyway, like breath, like water, then you can start to assimilate more friends, more positivity, more harmonics, more truth. But the more you keep getting into this closet as if it's just you out there and there's nobody like you and you're the only one, this is the kind of consciousness that actually sets in to begin to isolate us. And in that isolation, then it can attack. And a big part of this connection that we've been sharing for years, which you know, that's why I'm looking to, to increase this connection more, is primarily for the reason of making sure that we have others to actually connect with on this path. So that way, we're not feeling so lonely. We're not feeling so alienated in this world. Because the more people that you have that have that same frequency or, or similar frequency as where you're going, the more better that you feel about even going in the day. And I find that even myself, I have to even snap back into having friends. You know, you, know, you do so much on this internet, physical friends, I mean, you do so much on this internet and, you know, you do so much in your astral plane and your journeys and your dreams and, but there's still physical people here. And when you go on those journeys with those people or you make those connections and you sit down and you take time because see, that's what the awakening sometimes alters is our ability to do that and even remember that we're, that we need that. And the biggest example of this to me is I, I know that in a crazy person's mind, they're totally sane. So in many people's minds, they don't, see the, they don't see these flaws. And it takes someone who they respect, someone that they may honor, or someone that they have maybe as a mentor to say at times, hey, 
I'm experiencing that same thing or I've dealt with that same thing. I'm not beyond reproach. I got one of these five base bodies just like you. So the maintenance in it, the inclinations that occur and all the different things that it was already hardwired with before I jumped in does actually affect me. And what I do is instead of attempting to suppress, I attempt to really explore those thoughts, really explore those, those uh, ways of being, those reflections and those actions to also know what happened in the past and how has it affected me? What happened as a child and how has that affected me now in my present? How is that affecting how I'm looking even at everything around me? Am I into spirituality because something else has occurred? Is there a cause and effect to what I'm doing? And the reason why I analyze these kind of things is to be more true. Because once you can answer those questions for yourself, you can start being more true. Because one thing that I discovered also is generally because we do have these two poles, whatever a person really says that they're about, they're generally about exactly opposite. But the good thing is at least they know what they want to do and they know what they want to become. And that's a big part of it. And what I mean by that is I can only use myself as an example that I can say pound for pound after thousands and thousands of books that I don't believe personally that there is that many more people that understand as much about the mechanics to spirituality like different planetary systems, the geometry that's associated with the different connections in the words, you know, the words leading all the way back to certain times, references to aliens, angels, references to dominion, you know, all those different scopes that I've covered for, for uh, seven years now. I just think pound for pound, if I got into the paint with someone and just balancing out that knowledge, it would be very difficult because I've studied that long. So you could say maybe that I'm a savant in spirituality or maybe even smart. The reality is, though, is that there's some simple things at times, like you know, just how to deal with you know, personal things, how to deal with relationships, how to deal with business propositions, those kind of things. You know, where is my career going? That I may be completely clueless about at times because I have not devoted as much attention to that as I've done everything else. So what happens for also gifted people is they need to understand that if you have five things going on, or let's say four things for easy numbers, still you can generally do either 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, or 50, 25, 10, 15. You know, you have everything that you're doing is still pulling a certain amount of your energy, so you cannot do each of those 100%, unless, you know, you take individual time to finish something and then move on to the next thing. And because of that phenomena, at times we can find ourselves pushing a lot of strength into one aspect of who we are, one aspect of where we're getting a lot of response from. Because, you know, if you have uh, conscious Facebook friends, this kind of forces you every day, you know, if you may, to go into some kind of conscious conversation, conscious, right? And, you know, to take in some more conscious news, you know, about, you know, whatever. And that can make up so much of your day that you can forget that you also have this physical being. And then also, pretty much everyone has someone in their reality. How much time is that person getting of you? We talked about a long time ago how I started noticing that spirituality, not only uh, being addictive, but also was somewhat dominate, dominating life. You know, it's like you start just doing spirituality, 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 and then people are looking for you. They're looking for that connection with you. They're trying to figure out where you are. And, you know, it's like you're missing from that. And again, we're not saying any of this is wrong because that's okay. It depends on what stage that you're actually in. But by now, you should see the need for you to begin to figure out how you're reintegrating into the reality and creating something amazing because we're raging against the dying of the light. The more people go into seclusion and get themselves, what they say is spiritually together, and remain there, the less people that we actually have in the arena of the world still encouraging the masses, even from an energetic level, to make that change. 
And nowadays it's very sensitive because the minds are stronger. Like when you go on the journeys, you can feel the minds. You can feel the, the overarchs or the oversouls. And those are just basically the collective hive of the, the collective hive of the people. And when something comes across like, you know, the racism thing has like been, you know, the racism thing has always been alive, but it's alive more than ever these days. I mean, everywhere you go, there's just now that strict let's divide going on. Let's, let's divide our races. Now, black people, you must go over here. White people, must, you must go over here. We'll talk about Chinese later. Vegans, you must be over here. Meat eaters, you must be over here. We'll talk about, you know, uh, 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 vegetarians later or, or raw vegans later. You know, it's all of the division. And somehow this has now come across as being different than the original division, which was, you know, God and the devil and, you know, good versus bad and all these things. So the thing is, where is it really getting us? And if you want to answer that question, we just take a look at the world. We see where the division is getting them. It's got them all confused. People can spend most of their time every single day just sifting through knowledge and information or posts and things from people who are just polarized. We get that then. I get it. But how do we bring it together?